Procrastination is a bad habit I tend to have now and then. Sometimes I spend a lot of time surfing the internet, doubting myself, and pushing things aside to not have to deal with work, and this leads to me not getting anything done. I still personally believe that people should not be going full sprint mode during productions all the time, and one should pace themselves. And now it's time to start developing practices and strategies that can help you stay productive, that can have some benefits aside to just finishing a project. Hey guys, it's Nini Kupantua, and today it's going to be a bit casual. Today I'd like to talk about a few strategies that I personally use when I'm working on personal animated projects, working on writing material, or just any project including work. Especially in animation, it can be incredibly laborious just doing all that coloring, that in-betweening, all the things that I don't want to do but I have to do to just get something done. These are strategies that I personally use that work for me and have helped me stay productive and keep on track with my projects before the due date. Number one is that I use a timer, specifically the Pomodoro Technique. This was a strategy that was introduced to me when I was still a student at CalArts. Ever since my time at school, I've been utilizing the Pomodoro Technique. This is where I work for about 25 minutes just highly focused on my project, followed by 5 minute breaks. For me, 5 minutes is enough to reply to messages, send some mail, or walk around, talk to a few people here and then. Once that 5 minute break is over, I go back to work for 25 minutes straight again. I usually repeat the cycle for about 2-4 to four times, and after that, my next break would be about 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Except for like lunches and coffee meets, that could be for an hour. Since I mainly work on my desktop or my computer, I use a website called tomato-timer.com. And from there, you can start a timer of 25 minutes. There's a timer for a short break and a timer for a long break. And once the time is up, it usually beeps and it tells me that I need to take a break or I need to get back to work. However, not everyone will utilize this technique, but this technique actually helps me stay focused and pace myself. And that's something you have to consider, allowing yourself to work and allowing yourself to take even breaks and keeping that flow and balance consistent. I try to stay pretty strict with this schedule because I do believe that you need to pace yourself when you work. You need some time of work and sometimes a break. And this is so that you get used to the idea of just pacing yourself, not going full sprint, and acknowledge that there are break times and breathing spaces. And this is so that you get a better understanding of how long the process usually takes you. And in most cases, you'll notice that 25 minutes of just full-on focused work is not enough. It might go by pretty quickly. And eventually, you'll probably tell yourself that you want to spend longer time working on the project rather than just 25 minutes. The length of how long you work usually builds over time. But I would just suggest that you just pace yourself, acknowledge your breaks, and take things slow. Since it's still pretty important to keep track of what you're doing during that day, have a time for breaks and have a time for just full focused work. I would also like to add that this is a great way to find out how long each process takes you. How much work can you get done within those 25 minutes or an hour? That way you'll have more confidence when it comes to negotiating for commissions or freelance. When someone asks you how long a project will take, you already have an idea for that because of your experience timing that. Number two, document your process. Record, screen capture, or videotape your process. When I'm working on an art project or an animated project, I always document it. This is so that I can use these B-rolls for making of videos behind the scenes or casual discussions where I have a process video playing in the background like this video right now. And this is highly beneficial for someone like me who does casual videos where I talk about advices, educational content where I talk about process, and I don't need to just whip out a new process. I can just load up some of the process videos that I made in a previous project. I use an open source software called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. A lot of streamers use it. A lot of artists and animators like myself use it to stream or to record process videos. And it's free. You can just download it from the website. I'll put the link down below. If you have an Apple or a Mac, you can use QuickTime to record your screens. Again, think of this as surplus footage for future videos where I'd want to use that said process video for a related discussion. 
But the reason why this helps in productivity is that while recording, I have to make every step count rather than procrastinate and do other things, since that would just prolong the recording. For someone like me who makes casual YouTube videos with my voice just talking over a process video, this is actually a great way to utilize that surplus footage. And if you want to make process videos or YouTube content that's casual, I would totally recommend this practice. If I feel like I want to go the extra step, I'll consider another method, which is number three, stream live with either friends or to the public. When I feel like I might need a bit more pressure to work on something, and that pressure may include someone watching over me, sometimes I'll just stream. I mostly stream with just my friends since it's great for me to get their thoughts and feedback from people I trust in a live environment. This kind of brings me back to the good old times at CalArts when we all sat next to each other in the computer labs just working on our student films, giving each other ideas, feedback, and support for our own movies. If it's a public stream where anyone can see it, I have to make sure that project isn't NDA or secretive, and I keep my interaction with the public limited. I do my best to answer questions, but even that is tiring and requires a lot of work. If you want, you can get another person in the stream that can read the questions out loud for you rather than you having to scroll through the messages and read for that question. You can stream through YouTube or through Twitch, and you can use OBS as a way to broadcast your streams. There are more instructions and tutorials on that online. But again, the great thing about OBS is that you can broadcast your stream while also recording your process. However, if you just wanted to stream with just your friends, Discord is a great avenue, Google Hangouts, and Zoom can help on that matter too. It makes things a bit more private. But when you're live and people are just watching you work, it kind of forces you to just keep working and to stay focused on that work. I think that's why some people work better in environments outside of their house, where there is an environment where people are also working with you. Number four, make a schedule calendar. Make sure you're hitting your milestones. I usually don't make a schedule until I have a story reel or a list of shots and pieces to finish. Not unless I have something of an outline or a list of milestones to hit for the project. However, if you're starting a project from scratch, what you can do is have a plan on when to have a finished basic outline for your project. So for example, in animation, I'll give myself two to three months to come up with storyboards and a story reel with it. And then I'll give myself a few months for animation and a few months for coloring and compositing. Make mini deadlines on when you're supposed to finish each step in the process. But also keep that schedule realistic, meaning that it's not meant for full sprint work style, but still allows you to live a bit more balanced lifestyle. So when you are making a schedule, have some days off or some time to breathe. Have a day where you can socialize, attend other hobbies, attend other life errands, go to the gym, get buff. But yeah, plan out your outline. Number five, hold yourself accountable for when to finish. This is one thing I don't really do as much, but I realize how important it is to sort of put yourself accountable for finishing projects. So for example, I'll tell my friends that I'll have something to show at a date, or I'll tell the internet saying, hey, I'm gonna have something released by this month. Sometimes when I show work in progress along with a finished date, it keeps me in track and seeing people looking forward to a project that I'm working on somewhat keeps me motivated and productive for a personal project. If one of my personal projects includes a pitch for a movie or TV series, I schedule meetings with friends, acquaintances, and development to make sure I have something prepared for that date. If I don't have a date on when to finish or if I don't find myself accountable for anything, there's less risk. And when there's less risk, I feel like I'm more prone to just push things aside and let it slide. So like I said, to put myself accountable, I sort of put other people involved, making sure I don't waste their time as much as I don't waste my own time. It might be scary at first, but it also teaches you how to manage your time and how to make it count for something. Number six, turn off social media for most of the work hours and if needed, turn off the internet. So for me, I am easily distracted with social media. I wake up, I scroll through my social media feed. Every break I get, I access social media. I can spend minutes to hours scrolling nonstop. There are so much content, trends, and news. I can easily get affected by comparing myself to my peers and other people in social media. And I've stated this before, I'm fighting ego addiction. I catch myself worrying about how I look in social media, whether I'm pleasing my followers. And this is a problem I have with vanity platforms. I feel like I'm most productive when I turn off social media such as Twitter and Instagram, and I only turn it back on when I know that I'm done for the day of work. 
when I do use the internet, I try to keep it to a minimum. I use it just for messaging and replying to emails. When it comes to having content playing, such as having podcasts or videos off of YouTube, I make sure it's in a playlist so that I don't have to keep searching for new content to watch or listen to every time one ends. Because again, I could spend so much time just trying to surf what I want to look for. You could just have a TV show playing in the background or a playlist of music. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks, such as Audible. I'm not sponsored by Audible, by the way, but it's pretty cool so far. So these are methods that I personally use for staying productive at the moment. There are other factors such as having a good workspace and an environment where you feel like you can work at your most optimum. A good desk, good equipment, chair, and overall environment keeps you comfortable while working. A healthy and balanced lifestyle can keep both the mind and body stimulated. If you guys have any ideas on how you manage to stay productive, feel free to leave a comment down below and share that information with us. Anyways, that's all I wanted to share about how I managed to stay productive. There's really no deep secret to staying productive. Everyone's different. I would suggest you trying out different methods that people use that helps them stay productive. And eventually you'll find something that works best for you. Anyways, that's pretty much all. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.